like a poofy, ugly brown. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. So I got Friday favorites and foodies for you today. And I would say overall, this was a warm toned week and kind of a neutral warm toned week. I have some new goodies. I have some old favorites that I've been loving. Kind of a combo of all that, but mostly under that warm toned umbrella. So yeah, let's get into the favorites. For eyes this week, I've been playing with this little cutie. This is the most adorable stinking little palette ever. I just love it. This is the Too Faced Peanut Butter and Honey Palette. I could just stare at it. It's so stinking cute and it smells really good. It, it's, it's peanut butter and honey, but kind of almost like graham crackers or something. It smells really yummy. Um, I do have thoughts on this palette, so check out my review video that went up on Monday because I share more thoughts in there, show swatches, and kind of talk about like, I do feel like some things could have changed like in my opinion i would have liked this palette more if some things were different in it but i have been playing with it this week and really loving it um this one right here is what i have on my lids today i love this shadow this is so pretty that one is bees knees and then i really love honey buns i feel like that one is the one that everybody is like super excited about that's what i wish there were more of in this palette just gonna say like golds and yellows I would have loved that, but I do really like several shades in this palette, like those two. And then this one down here, Feeling Nutty. This one's a really cool kind of like mustardy yellow. I think that's why I like it. It's got, not a yellow, a mustardy brown. It's kind of like a poopy, ugly brown, but a, a poopy, ugly brown that I really like. Like it's a poopy, ugly brown that really, really works. And Bee's Knees, the other one, um, is kind of like a like a coppery color. Let me try to get it swatched where you can see it a little bit more. It's like a coppery color, but then it has like some gold micro shimmer in it. It's really, really like a pretty and unique color. Like that's why I really do like it. So those three right there are the standouts in the palette for me and what really make me enjoy this palette a lot. So check out that review video to like hear more information about it, but I have been using it most of the week and really, really liking it. For Cheese This Week, this is an old favorite in my collection. This is Benefit's Sugar Balm. And this is a blush that when I first got it, I really was not a fan of it. If you've heard me talk about this blush before, I've mentioned that. Like when I first got it, I was like, what is this supposed to be? Like it looks really pretty in the pan, but it's very light. So, like when I first swatched it, I was like, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it reminds me of Wet n Wild's, um, is it Rose Champagne? One of my top five favorite blushes. I think it's Rose Champagne. Um, in that it looks so light in a swatch that I just didn't know if it was like a highlighter or blush or what in the world, but when you get it built up, it's so pretty. It's like perfect for every day. Now this is super light. So I would say that this would work for um, light to porcelain skin tones as a blush. Um, medium to deep, I would say maybe more of like a highlighter because it's just super, super light. So even I have to build it up and I'm pretty fair complected. I'm not porcelain porcelain, but I'm pretty fair. So. You know, it, it really has to be built up even on me. But when you do get it built up, I mean, it's just like so pretty for every day. It can be that like no makeup makeup look blush color just because it's, it's not overwhelming. It's really hard to mess up because it's so light and it does take building, but it has this really nice kind of like peachy sheen to it. It's just subtle, but it's fresh and really pretty. So it's one of those that I feel like can be easily overlooked and even not appreciated when first purchased because that's what happened with me. I definitely did not appreciate it until I really kind of like learned how to use it and learned how to appreciate it. Because like if you pair it with like a smoky eye, it's like a perfect balance. So it's one of those great just neutral blushes. And I feel like I just mentioned this blush semi-recently, but I mentioned it again because I've been loving it again this week and it's one of my favorites. This is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Blush and this is in Tender Rose. These blushes are so nice and so underrated. I love this one. I love Baby Blossom. And I think the other one is Innocent Flush, I think. But they're just so pretty and they're one of those blush formulas that is hard to mess up. So kind of like the 
Clinique cheek pops. I always compare everything to those when I talk about like blushes that are hard to mess up and kind of have to be built up because those are, those are kind of like, I don't know. Those are what I think about when I think about a great blush like that. That's just not one that sticks, but is easy to work with, easy to build up. This is another one of those formulas. It just is really easy to work with. You can apply it really lightly and just get a light wash of color on your cheeks or you can build it up and it builds on itself really nicely. This is a really pretty kind of like everyday pinky mauvey rose color. It really is a very tender rose shade. So that's a good descriptive name for it. It's very like sweet and tender and not like over the top and bright, but still really beautiful. Um, has kind of like, I mean, it's mostly matte, maybe like a satin sort of a finish, but just beautiful on the cheeks. Such a sweet, like light, subtle, girly look. Ooh, I love this highlighter. This is so pretty. This is gorgeous. This is by Pixie and this is one of their collab products. This is with Aspen Novard and this is one of their glowy powders. I really like the pinky one too. Well, I like all three of them. They're all really pretty, but the pinky one, or it's kind of peachy pink. I think I just talked about that one last week or the week before semi-recently and I don't remember the name of that one. I think it's rose something. I'm not sure, but it's the blushy looking one. It's gorgeous too. Anyway, this one is London Luster. Oh my goodness, y'all just wait. Look at that. That is so pretty. It's like a really light, like icy gold is how I would describe it. It's very light, but it has like a golden tint to it. It's amazing. Oh my goodness. So, so pretty. This is what I have on today. I have it on the inner corners of my eyes too. It's a really nice formula too, because sometimes these like really light colors on my skin tone can even start to look, and I'm again, pretty light, but they can start to look a little bit strange because they're so light. But this one is like a really nice formula where it blends well into the skin. So it can kind of be like diffused out and just, I don't know, blended nicely. So it's kind of like a nice transition. So it's not just a line, you know, not like a line of white on your face. So really nice formula to it. Just a gorgeous shade, oh my goodness. I love all of these glowy powders. They're really, really nice. But this is the one I've been loving this week. Now onto lips, another old favorite from my collection that I was loving this week is one of the Maybelline Creamy Mattes. This is Lust for Blush. Oh, I love this color, this is amazing. It's just a really beautiful, like muted, fuchsia, mauve kind of a color. But I love the muted side of it. Like that's why I really like it, that it's not super duper intense and bright, but still kind of like a statement lip. So it's a really good, I don't know, fun lip color for a lot of situations. So I think it's still pretty work appropriate and you know, I'd wear this too pretty much everywhere. But love the creamy mattes. Every time I mention them, I mention how much I love them because they're just an awesome formula. They're comfortable on the lips. They're long wearing, they're super affordable, especially if you get them at like Walmart or Target or something, they're like around 550 and they're just some of my favorite lipsticks. And now what used to really kind of bother me, the scent, which is kind of like a Play-Doh-y, I don't know, strange sort of smell. I actually love it now because I love Maybelline lipsticks. So when I smell that smell, I'm like, oh, Maybelline lipsticks. So. Now I actually really like the smell, but it's it's a strange one. It's very Play-Doh-y and odd, but um, yeah, old favorite, such a pretty color. This color from e.l.f. is so cute. Like that's how we describe it. It's just a cute, fun color. This is one of the e.l.f. moisturizing lipsticks and this is in Orange Dream, which by the way, I was trying to look up swatches of Orange Dream and apparently it's some creepy kind of snake. Oh my goodness. Like. I mean, I guess in the world of snakes, it would be considered a pretty snake, but I hate snakes. Like even talking about it, I feel like my blood pressure is raising. Like I'm just like, oh, they creep me out so much. So here I am trying to look up a lipstick swatch and it's all these pictures of snakes. Oh, so just FYI, that was a tangent, but if you're like me and really don't like snakes, I would say, you know, don't 
just put in the hashtag orange dream or put in elf orange dream or something like that to avoid the terror of a line of snake pictures. Okay, that was a tangent. Back to the lipstick. It's a really pretty bright orange color, which when I would first like look at a swatch of this, I would go, wow, I don't know about that. But what I did is just apply it kind of lightly and just like rub my lips together. So then it kind of like gave like a wash of orange. Like it was still bright, but it wasn't like this. It wasn't as intense. It was just kind of like a, like a washing of orange. You know what I mean? So just kind of lighter, but I mean, just fun. Like this is a color that, you know, I don't know, five years ago, I would have gone, there's no way I'm wearing that color. Like that's no, that I, I can't pull that off. But now it's like, I feel like, hey, why not? You know, just wear the orange lipstick. Life's too short. So, you know, now I love it. I think it's so pretty. Really nice formula to these. They're really um, creamy and they are pretty long wearing. Now this did kind of like, it almost sets down to like a mat and then can like, it's not like it's drying, but it did start to show some of the dry patches on my lips. So that's just a little FYI. Um, but I like that, like not the dry patch part, but I like the like setting down to a mat because I just find that it sticks around longer and doesn't move everywhere. So I really like this formula a lot. And lastly, what I have on my lips right now, another old favorite from my collection. This is one of the Lorac Alter Ego lipsticks which I'm really tempted by their newer shades. They look really pretty. I like these lipsticks. Again, they're that kind of like formula that starts out more kind of creamy. Um, now this is more matte. This starts out more matte than the e.l.f. moisturizing lipsticks, but it just kind of like sets down and then it just stays around so well. I'm perfecting my swatch just a little bit and a very big swatch for some reason. Hang on. So yeah, it's that kind of like matte sort of a formula. Um, that I really, really enjoy. It's not uncomfortable to me. Now I've heard kind of like mixed reviews on these lipsticks. It seems like people kind of love them or hate them, but I really like them because it's just that matte formula that sets down, stays around, doesn't necessarily feel like hydrating, but doesn't feel uncomfortable. And these, I really don't notice them accentuating the dry patches, except with the lighter colors. The lighter colors, definitely I notice that, but you know, just, do a little bit of a lip scrub or something like that and prep your lips and you're good to go. But really nice. And as far as like high-end lipsticks, this is a more, you know, technically affordable one because I think they're $18, which is better than, you know, 29 or 34 or something like that. So I think they're really, really great. If you tried out some of the newer colors, let me know what you think about them because I'm kind of tempted, but I don't need more lipstick. So maybe don't share your experience unless you really didn't like it. Maybe that would help me out a little bit. <laughs> Alright guys, so those are all my favorites for this week. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video. Please hit a thumbs up if you did and let me know down below what you were loving this week or maybe not so much loving. Let me know your weekend plans or any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer those. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!